Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormi and we are back here today playing more Starters Order 7. Now, it's the start of our final season, a little bittersweet right now. Um, we have made some changes, have made some changes. So, you see that we kept the four four-year-olds, Desigon, Derity and Derifax and Dare Party. Um, three of those run in this video, Com Jam. Bailey's there, Angel Adam, Adam Storm, Sweet Jam, all available too. Yansagon has, well, gone. Um, didn't look the best, didn't feel that we would be doing much there. And we've only gone with Halyadam and Adam Sagon with, you know, maidens for the two-year-olds. Those are the only two-year-olds we have. So a couple of horses down. Breeding, we're going ahead with Iris Flyer. It's a horse that I quite like and I've been looking at for a little bit. And, you know, almost half races are won. Decent amount of prize money for a low amount of wins. You know, won at multiple groups. Only won one grade one, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but it's one of the younger horses that I liked as opposed to quite a lot of these horses that were really good. Um, that we've already bred from. Or some of the ones we haven't yet bred from but are quite old. Good rating. Everything looks pretty decent. So it's kind of why I thought that might be a good chance to do something. We've kept Millstrom and Brave Company. Those are the two yearlings. Uh, I decided to be really, really kind of um, strict on myself with those. And actually just kind of keep both of those. They both have 80s. They both look good elsewhere. Um, so they'll be added on to the transfer list at some point in this season. I'm not sure when I want to do that. As well as the remaining breeding that we're going to be doing from Iris Flyer and whatever we get back from that. Anything that makes my list will go on to the transfers. So as we close this out and then we'll uh, take a look and add some of these horses back in. But I'm not exactly sure who. I'm just going to probably pick from fairly random uh if i'm honest i'll pick let's see i've got 16 to import so I'll probably not import the full 16 into a new game um i mean if i did i'd import at least 12 fillies i get i guess some four colts and that'll get me off to a good start so we need to start thinking about that too, about how that's all going to line up for us. Um, yeah, we're heading to Kenilworth. This is a tough race to win. Heading to Africa, it's the six furlong, uh, sorry, not six furlong, it's the mile long Marines Queen Plate. Um, there's normally some races between six furlongs and a mile out here at the start of the season. And we've never really done well with them. Um, a couple of horses have ran well. We've got some good grades out of these, but yeah, three year olds very dodgy. Four year olds a touch more success, but it's usually the five year olds like in their final, final season. Um, but top rated on weight, everything looks good. We're gonna go in for this one and we're just gonna see what happens. Basically, La Marine Queen Plate. You can see us here with a poor start. Shiroko start also pretty poor alongside us. We've got Rain Dancer towards the rear of the field. We've got Echoes of Motivator here on this far away from the rail. This near side camera, but the far side from the rail. Uh, Madam's view is up there. We're being run behind Art History right now. In the red silk climbing up to join High Jinx. And Conjurer's Bluff is right there. We're inside two now. The hunt for home begins. One and a half furlongs. Art History and Hijinx there with us. Shiroko Star coming from deep. Inside the final furlong. Conjurer's Bluff, though, still by about a length and a half. It is shortening. And here comes the push. Final half a furlong. Darifax with an absolute beastly push. That's what we want to see. Big win. Darifax takes it. That 130 rating goes up to a 131. That is 6 1 and 0 in terms of our grades. 
and no movement. No movement on the ability. So I thought that might be a good enough race to actually um to see a little bit of progress there, but apparently Apparently not. Um I guess not really a prestigious race with that kind of prize money, but um Yeah. Yeah. I think that's supposed to be like a seven hundred and fifty thousand. It just shows up as a seventy five. Now I could be wrong. Excuse me, it could be like a cheap race, but I don't know, it, it does seem off quite a bit, if I'm honest. Just just a bit. Let's go through. Nothing at the auctions. And here we go then. Evangeline Downs. Adam Sagom. Please. Please, please, please. First time of asking. Three quarters of a length. Not great. Beat someone that ran green. Probably wouldn't have normally run. Um, and won that one. Halea Dam. Ooh, yeah, there we go. So, really not good. We're in the stock and we were out class. Okay. Um, I'm really not sure... What happened here? I think... I mean, the only thing I can hope for is that we wanted... Um, less distance. I mean, it plays into that. We were right up the front and then we fell off, like, dramatically. So let's book a little bit later on. Choose a small field. Sit Halea Dam right in there. Um... I'm so gone. I mean, decent. Did we gain anything out of that? That was 60. You can see we're probably up to about 67 or so. That's a little bit of an increase. Halea Dam was only 55. You can see up to 65. That's a pretty decent jump. An actual decent jump there. So the worst racer got a big jump. I'm not convinced that Amsagon is actually a great horse there. Won the maiden, but question marks. Question marks all over that one. So before my throat and my voice give out to me, because they are on their way, it seems. Um, too much in the way of allergies and changes in weather over the last week. So apologies for that, but we're going to get through as best we can. And then we head to Gulfstream. And we're going to throw in on these races. Here we go. I thought we'd never get to them. There were so many in the way. Um, but big races. This is big time stuff now. Top rated, on weight, class field. Viscount somehow got in here on a grade three. Everybody else. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I would think that something like the Pegasus World Cup should, like, should, with this much prize money behind it, like, possibly be for grade ones only. Well, you've got to have proven yourself in a grade three. That's kind of what I would want to see. Yeah, very, very good, um, good field. Stand side. I mean, we're going to have so many people on outside. It's not even worth worrying about. Medea's in here. We're running against them with a bunch of horses that we, you know, don't know how they're going to run. But we're so far on the inside. We're never going to be too far away from the rail. Um, that's just the way it is. And as it is, uh, we're, we're in the middle of the pack there. We're not too near, too far. So, could get blocked off very easily. Huh? Art history sitting just in front where we get up on the outside there. That will help us out. Swift approach up top. We've got Shelter. Bring on the Judge. Viscount is up there near the front. Medea around the outside. Though the yellow silks as we take over the lead down to one and a half. 
and that bright yellow silk on the outside there just about in picture is the real danger swift approach running well perennial now starting to make a move Medea though really coming up strong with a good run up in the second place it's the hand in the air from Dersagon like I said we don't need to worry about where the best turf is because we start on the inside Pegasus World Cup turf big win big win nice win uh three points us up to 134 that's our seventh grade one win which brings brings desagon out into the lead and we don't move up in ability which i find frustrating because we just won the pegasus world cup comfortably like what was it two and a half lengths over Medea, or two a quarter over Medea, with perennial Oki Dory, like some really good horses in this mix. Um, like Medea's got twelve grade ones. Perennial's been second a bunch of times. Now Swift Approach got a couple. Oki Dory's got six. Bring on the judge has got four. Returning should have more. Ukrainian solid. Shelter's got three. Uh, these two should both only have one, and they do, but still. I don't know. We beat as a one thirty. We beat a, a one, you know. Sorry, one thirty one. We beat a one thirty. We beat a one twenty nine. Like the lowest in the fields, one fifteen and one nineteen. I would have thought that might have pushed us up, and I'm, I'm disappointed. I really, really want to get to that ninety. I really want to get to that ninety. Uh, you follow that up with. The Pegasus World Cup, Deratine sitting in with a slightly easier field. Promo Lady in here. Um, I would say, I would say the main challenger, possibly. We will see how that goes. But again, we are starting on the outside. If we sit out there, that's fine. That will help us on, you know, with regards of the turf. Oh, not turf, the ground that we're running on. Um, and we will be a little bit further up this way, so might give us a slight advantage. But we are a closer. We're going to come from behind your tutor up top. We've got Ebony Claret, Stronghold, Promo Lady, and then Tuxedo, Lady of Bur Burgundy, and Mullerin right with us. We're going to come up the outside, up into third, two from home. It's almost three-way dance. Promo Lady, though, starting to edge out in the leads. We zoom the camera in now. At the final furlong, with just a short head there, we change into the lead. Promo Lady, though, right on the inside. Tuxedo Tuta. We've got Lady of Burgundy in this mix as well. Lady of Burgundy up into third. Deratine. A decent run. Not, not a great run, but a decent run. That will be win number five at grade one level. That's moving up to 126. And you can't gain potential. Because you're already maxed. But that's quite nice. That's quite nice. Deratine, Desagon, Derafax. Opening up with wins, I will happily take that. I don't know why Deratine is the uh, the favourite there. Was it just like prize money, perhaps? Perhaps it was prize money. Hmm... That would make a little bit of sense. Just a little bit of sense. Saratoga. Oh, I wanted to see. I'll, I'll see from the main screen rather than check back there. Second. Okay. By head, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, should be better. Should be better. Should be better. I kind of... Kind of a few rating, not gonna lie. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
Not really sure what's going on there. Not really sure what's going on there. Okay. Uh, let me go book some more races. And we will rejoin when that is done. Okay, we have our races booked in. Check the Friday auction on the way. But there's, again, not really much showing up. Breeders Auction doesn't have too much. And we can just take our time with the breeding. We don't have too many options in the barn. So we can just keep on slowly feeding through. So Adam Storm. Decent horse. Decent horse, I think, can do much better than they have been doing. So it's a grade two to match what we already have. Now, Adam Storm is a good horse. She runs quite well, but at the same time, I'm not fully... I'm not fully convinced. We should be good. And we kind of are. But we're also kind of not, so... Not too terrible start. We do drift to the back and then start making our way up into the mid-pack. Um, not sure there on the sort of energy being wasted in effect. We're going to come around the turn off. Fairly narrow trip for us here. Can we get blocked off? I don't know. Is there a pathway through? I think so. We're inside one and a half. We're yet to make our move. It could be very difficult now to win from this kind of position on the inside being blocked off. Not being able to go outside. Probably not going to be able to navigate a gap. But Sydney Cove. And then Darylton. Just up on Noose Volar. And we're. Quite far back. But we were picking up apparently. We were picking up before. The end of the race. So. Okay I'll take that. I mean. Again, not great, but at least there's a reason for it. And yes, now we're finally... I checked them the day before. I checked them the day before we were going to run. Or when we set everything up. Like, it was like a week, sorry, before. And that's on me. Okay, um, maybe I missed something. That's fine, but... Um, That's not a bad finish, really, from someone that wants not one, but two more furlongs. You're still five. You're still a mile. You're still a mile two. You're still a mile one. You're still six. And you're probably still five. Yeah, so nobody looks to have changed. I mean... Yeah. Sometimes, though, they do. I don't know. Daymate, grade one. Uh, Crystal Star, grade two. Kadara is a grade three. Hosanna Lai is a an ungraded. Uh, lowest sort of rated, youngest, low-weighted, uh, worst form. Yeah, foreign sprint. I, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. If we have any chance. It looks like a pretty poor start. But then we uh, we do get out pretty well after that. Just a little late than others. But a nice sort of launch out of the gate. We'll see kind of how that comes into effect. Down to the final one and a half. Hosanna Lee is there with us. Kadara and Daymit now though coming up. We got the lead inside the final furlong. It's where the big finish is coming from. Is it coming from deep? It looks like it's actually coming from us. Pushing out the head of the field. Com Jam. With a big win. That's... That's exciting. Um, that's... Puzzling, but it's exciting. Hey... We'll take it. 102, grade 2, two and a half lengths. 
maybe we can win grade ones there. I'm not sure what really is available though. Fine furlongs for three year olds. Grade one. I'm not really sure that adds up. Um, but yeah, no, Com Jeremy been waiting to see run well. And we get at least a grade two. We get over the hundred marker. I can't really be mad at that. That's um kind of gratifying. Very gratifying being able to get that kind of result there. Nice, nice. Um data facts, okay, Tokyo. The February. Another pretty tough race to run. Good field for Godona in here. I mean, not overanalyzing anything. It's probably a two-way sort of fight between ourselves and the Canadian. So let's see. Some other good horses in here, though. Egyptian Lord. I know that Tuxedo's in here, who's decent. Um, Chief Yeoman is going to go to the front. Can be dangerous as well. So... Bunch of decent horses, you know, Ricardona and ourselves, similar place in the field. They've got a pathway through. We might be a little blocked off, but it's going to open up a tiny bit here around the bend. Then it's going to close off. We're in behind Condra's Bluff. We need to get going. We do move up and one and a half from home. We're on a haunches side by side with Ricardona chasing down Chief Yeoman. There's one furlong to go. Ricardona's yet to do anything. Is their time as a great horse over? It's starting to look that way as we come flying past Chief Yeoman. Country Project Condra's Bluff right there with Ricardona. Complete in the top five. Mandragore on the outside almost uh, almost actually coming up on Ricardona. It actually does pip Condra's Bluff there. But one and three quarters, we win our second race of the season. The Queen's Plate... The February, we're up to a 130, uh, sorry, 133 from a 131. We tie things up now with seven grade one wins. Was that big enough? Was the opposition good enough? Was the, the win impressive enough? Was the race prestigious enough? Of course not. Why would it be? Why would it be? Why would it be? Yeah, I might take something a little more impressive, um, I guess. Okay, Derefax, I mean, there's two wins to open us up with uh, a good run this season. A third one might be on the way soon. Um, yeah, those, those good mile races come pretty thick and fast early on, so... We're going to keep actually throwing in on that. Let's see then. So we get a grade one winner at auction. Multiple grade one winner, I should say. Awfully in Colonges. Someone we've raced against a couple of times. Don't really remember them like winning a lot of races or facing against them that often. We didn't really have a horse at the same distance. Um, but they, you know, they've had a good career. They they've run fairly well in a number of places. And it looks like they might be seven furlong to a mile, and not these six furlongs they're booked into. And that's not bad. I mean, you want the full finish. That that's let's face facts. That's the main issue here. Um, not too much cruising burst, but seven furlongs. Yeah, I I can understand that enthusiasm. Low. We don't love it. Um, acceptable extra speed, acceptable potential filled out there. Yeah. I mean, sadly, not really 
good enough to race. We've got enough to race at this uh, this point in the season, but still, it's not bad picking up a horse like that, sort of at uh, this point in the season. Could have been a decent runner, but we don't really. I say we don't need a four-year-old that runs that way. Uh, okay, so King Abdul Aziz. This is the mile two hundred ten yard Mohammed Yusuf Nagi Motors Cup Grade One on turf for four-year-olds and above. Their party so close to getting that one forty. This is going to be good enough. A win here will be good enough. This is prestigious. It's part of the Saudi Cup meeting. King Abdulaziz racetrack in Saudi Arabia. Take a deep breath. And a little late out the gates. A little late out the gates there on the inside for their party. We're running a little cool as well. So... Perhaps a little too laid back, but I'm looking at the field that I mean, Medea's in there and a couple of others like returning, the Prima we know might be running really, really well. At the moment, Swift Approach leads us, though, Betrith Kid, uh, GKL, that is the Prima and the Pink Silks moving up, we're now moving into the top five, two, going to take the long trip round, all the way around the outside, two from home, we're up into second place. And we're starting to get alongside Swift Approach there. One and a half furlongs down towards the final furlong marker. On the home stretch here now. The fight for the line begins. One furlong from home. Swift Approach getting blown away. GKL coming from deep. Good horse. But it doesn't look like they're going to do too much. De Prima's there. Betrith Kid is there. Medea weight on the order. I mean, not really... A good run from them, but they haven't run exceptionally well in a while. They haven't won in a while. Lots of second places, lots of, you know, being beaten by our horses, I guess. But um, decent prestigious race in a good race meeting in good company by six lengths is enough. It is enough. Their party joins their Sagon and Derefax as seven grade one wins on the board. Joins Nonagon Death Row as a 140 horse. A little later than we wanted. We wanted it last season. We got ever so close. We couldn't quite get up on it. But we got the job done there. And again, I'll take it. I will take it. All the really good horses lined up in uh, in this meet. So, yeah, Sweet Chan. Okay, let's let's talk a little bit about Sweet Chan. Um, possibly one of the better three-year-olds we've got. Um, possibly will never have the distance to compete the Triple Crown. But I think we can win some good sprints and then move it on towards a mile kind of in the future. So, I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Don't really know the rest of this field too well. So, this is the Saudi Sprint, six furlongs on dirt. A grade one race for three rolls and above, and we are out of the gates really late with Lamini. Not a great performance there. Byron Blue and still make delightfully the side of Epic Dancer at the front. We've got Well Mick and Novel, then back to Whispering Death, who's a very dangerous horse in the black silk zone so near the inside. There, one and a half from home, we're on the outside. Larmony and two sets to love right at the back of the field. We've got some ground to make up. Whispering Death can move up through the field here. They're going to take the inside path. Well, Mick coming with us. Byron Blue looking to hunt down delightfully. We get up, though, into the lead. Whispering Death with good pace at the finish. 
but just couldn't get up into the mix. Good from delightfully Byron Blue there. They're not actually stable mates, they just wear exactly the same silks. I uh, I wasn't paying too much attention at the start, apparently. But uh, a good win, one, one length, six furlongs. I mean, I'll take it. Sweet Jan, that's 11 points up to a 111. Gets you grade one. Chance to improve. Hey, Sweet Jan improves and maxes out at 80. And yeah, if I had faith that we'd gain distance, I'd be pretty happy with putting Sweet Jan into a triple crown race. As it is, the Preakness might fit really nicely. I think the Derby's too far. The Preakness might be a touch too far. Um, yeah, gonna have to wait and see how that stamina bar looks throughout the year. We'll see who else comes to the fray as well. This ball kind of looks really, really nervous and um, agitated right now. They're top rated with us. They are favourites with us pretty much um but yeah this is the big one this is the big one 20 million dollar prize under the lights at the king abdulaziz racetrack saudi arabia grade one race for four-year-olds and above here on the dirt track the saudi cup over one mile one furlong and Daratin is running. Five grade one wins in their career. 126 rated isn't amazing. But this is a better horse than we have seen so far. Alexis Dare took a lot of the races that Daratin could have gone into. We're currently behind the chasing pack on the outside. With Vicon, Shalor, Shelter, Diceball, Kylie and Prom Lady all up in the mix. Final one and a half down to the final furlong. And we are going to be about a length to a length and a half ahead. Moving out, clear Dwena coming through into second place. But nobody's going to get close. $20 million on the line. Deratine, hand in the air from, uh, from Javier Toledo. Great run by the jockey. And this horse is a lot better than we have ever seen um, so far. None of their races so far have shown... A fraction, I feel, of what they could do. So I put in Alexis there into that uh, breeding barn with her 10 grade 1 wins. Daratine, four and a half year in the Saudi Cup. 12, money, uh, 12 million now in money as their uh, reward for winning that race. It's a great sort of opening couple of months. End of January, the Pegasus World Cup. Decent win. And then the Saudi Cup, just to make sure you cannot sleep on this horse. Well, if you're the jock, you probably can. He's that smooth a ride. But um, our four-year-olds, 140 Dare Party, 134 for Dare Sagom, And Darefax is joined by Dare Routine on 133. Seven grade ones for the other three. Six for Dare Routine. Absolutely Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm really enjoying watching the four-year-olds run this year. What a class it's been. What a class it has been. Like, Derej, we beat him so often. So often. But with super horses of our own, I knew he was good when he finally did break the pattern and start winning. I was impressed. And yeah, we just, we had to breed and see what would come from it. And we did. And it turned out pretty good. It turned out pretty good. The tester was okay. But it was that next year when we did everybody. And we got a whole lot of these horses. 
two-year-olds winning grade ones comfortably, dominantly. A grade three level, dominant. Didn't win the Triple Crown. Didn't really go in for them apart from their party who had to play second fiddle to Nonagon, um, who came from a dedicated breeding program. But still, I think a mile two, their party has the edge over Nonagon. But we didn't really see or test that one. And instead, we come out now with a four year old season. Some horses, you know, didn't really make the cut and have faded away. Couple of the fillies there, you know, Alexis Dan ski party. Um, you know, to my best in that uh in that breeding barn right now, alongside Nonagon Death Rope, British Pearl Afro Storm, some good breeders in there. But like Alexis Dare is definitely one of the best. And not so much up there, but competent is Dare Storm, who's the other one we put through. So I'm I'm very happy that, you know, at this point in their career, we're still holding like technically six of Derege's foals. Derefax Dare Party, Daratine, Dare Sagon, Alexis Dare, and Dare Storm. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to set up there. Um, I'm tempted to buy the yearlings, but I'm also tempted not to hold his hair on Ireland. Horse expired, so we don't know. I mean, it's got me intrigued. It's got me intrigued. Four on grade one. Cheap to buy. I don't want to see. And hey, I mean, not perfect, not by any stretch of the imagination, but yeah, if we had a full finish, that would be a very, very nice horse. I doesn't am i being really really super focused on like perfect horses not great horses not good horses perfect sort of horses um that's our, our goal and we're getting close non gone death roll saffron fang i mean so far our foidos are proving that you know multitudes of races can just be absolutely won um yeah but we're getting really close. We're not going to go to the day. We're just going to skip the day. Halia Dam finally wins. Five furlongs. Yeah, five and three quarter lengths. Looks really good. We were short of room, but everything came together. We finally get the job done. Halia Dam is an 83. Um, it doesn't really improve a tiny bit, but might Kind of be done there before it gets to 70. A damn Sagon. Touch over 65. We should be able to get a good race for them soon. 25th of March. Do I want to wait that long? No, I'm going to book it, but we'll run that next video. Um, we'll run Darifax and we'll see who else has got something in between those races. So we don't miss out. But yeah, Darifax. With a chance to make it three from three to open up the season. As we head now. Back to Santa Anita. Top rated on weight form horse. Best horse. Darifax. Two wins under his belt. Chance to take the lead in the race to ten grade ones. We've got seven, same as Desk on Dare Party, one ahead of Daratine. But joins Daratine on 133, a point behind Desagon, and of course, seven behind Dare Party, who has that magical 140. How good can this horse be? Room to grow. 80 ability can move up to 85. We will see. Not the best of starts. We're in a bit of a, a box area right now where 
horses in front and behind, none really to our side. We're going to have to go the long way round. Condra's Bluff Manners view Shiroka Star. Bring on the judge and mostly sure is there. El Rabe is coming with us. And we never really had a good run. And I really hate that. I, I Honestly, the only reason I didn't like slow that down was because I thought there was still like a good furlong and a half to go because we didn't even get up into position. I'm used to us getting up into position about three furlongs from home and then slowing it down when we're kind of coming towards the front runners. But yeah, we just didn't seem to be. Anywhere. So two and a quarter there. One and three quarters there. And we've beaten a few of these horses in those races. And yet we're three lengths back. I really don't get that. Um, we lose four rating points, which is annoying. We don't even gain any ability. Okay, I mean, if that's what it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. Um, yeah, save the game. That's going to wrap things up there. What a sticky situation where in right now um like adam storm didn't run their race too well which is a shame helena dam had a bit of a trouble but we're back on track but like i really thought everything else is going really pretty well and derifax then going into that perhaps we were overconfident perhaps just one of those days things didn't really run our way poor start didn't get a good run had to go super wide you know, never had a chance to really attack, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel like that race belongs in this season from what else we've seen, especially from them. That's three races. Kind of expected more. I did kind of expect more. Um, and what's that? Nine. That's 16 days in between the February and the Frankie Kilroy mile, so... I don't even think it was too soon. So yeah, we've got no excuses. We weren't, weren't wound up or agitated. We weren't laid back or too calm. We had a poor start. We never had a, a good path through the field. We did have to go wide, but we never had the pace and we were never in position. And yeah, that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. What a way to finish off. Just making me question everything when everything was going pretty good. Like, Adam Storm might not be genuine. Doesn't change a thing. Halea Dam finally gets maidens right. We've had, you know, great horses not win until their third. But Derefax, to be that good last season, sort of mid, from the midpoint towards the, uh, you know, to the end of last season and the opening to this year. And then to put that out. Mind is blown right now. So, yeah. We go again. We retry. We try and keep pushing up uh, our horses to the best of their ability and get them as much as we can. But, yeah, kind of a, kind of a scary one. Kind of a scary one for me. Yeah, there we go. I'll see you next time. Till then, take care. Thank you very much for the support. As always, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill by now. Check out the Discord link in the description to join for more starters, orders, um, commentary, and help, and you know, be able to brag about your game or get little bits of of information that you might be sort of looking for. Some tips, some tricks, some tools there. 
some ways of keeping up with your horses, everything on there. Great knowledge base, great people. So join. I'll see you there soon. I'll see you in the next video. And we'll figure out what just went wrong. <laughs>